Well, glory to God, uh, this is uh, the uh, Holy Ghost Forum. We're meeting in Murraysville, Pennsylvania at uh, Pastor Gary Rudder's uh, church, the Bloodbot Church. Uh, he's uh, right here, located right here in Murraysville, so if you don't have a place to attend church, I'd encourage you to come uh, visit his church. We also have Pastor John Maruka. Uh, who is from New Brighton. So if you need a church in uh, New Brighton area, uh, see his church, uh, Victory Assembly. And uh, they're, uh, they've been meeting a number of years right there in New Brighton. And again, to my, uh, to my left is uh, Pastor uh, Marlene Levent, and she's meeting in Delmont. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Mm -hmm. And uh, I always forget the name of your church. International Marlene. Word of Faith. International Word of Faith. Shouldn't forget that name. That's a good name. So she's in Delmont. So if you uh, if you don't have a place to uh, attend church, uh, get out on Sunday morning and uh, fellowship with the believers. Amen. But today we're going to have a Holy Ghost forum, and uh, we're uh, looking forward to the time ahead, talking about the move of the Spirit and the gifts of the Spirit. And uh, we're going to begin today uh, in First Corinthians. And chapter 12 and uh, I want to read here from uh, beginning in the, uh, the chapter and uh, listen anybody feel free to chime in just to uh, uh, break in at any time but Paul the Apostle begins here in chapter 12 talking about spiritual manifestation uh, the King James Version uses the word gifts, uh, but uh, it wasn't necessarily in the original version uh, or written in the original. Uh, it has to do with uh, spiritual manifestation or spiritual phenomena, things of the and by the Spirit of God. And Paul begins here in verse 1 of 1 Corinthians chapter 12. He says, Now... Concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. You know that you were Gentiles carried away into these dumb idols, even as you were led. Um, of course, Paul starts out and tells us, that, you know, pretty much point blank. If you want to have spiritual phenomena, uh, spiritual, um, just uh, move of the Spirit, uh, operation of the Spirit, you're going to have to know something about it. And that's why we're spending so much time talking about uh, uh, these gifts of the Spirit. Uh, because ignorance will guarantee that these will not operate in your midst. So uh, uh, let's go on here. He says, you, you know that you were Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols, even as you were led. Paul makes... Uh, the point here and emphasizes that uh, the gods of this world are not going to talk to you. They're, they're, uh, they're without a voice. But he's telling us here that the gifts of the Spirit, when they're in operation, allow God to speak to his people through the manifestation of the gifts of the Spirit. In fact, I would venture to say that all nine of the gifts of the Spirit at some point are put forth vocally. Uh, anybody that has the working of miracles in their lives uh, and op that operation in the Spirit, you say, well, can't God work a miracle without saying it? Most of the time, they're talking about the miracle. They're speaking of the miracle. They're, they're talking uh, of what God wants to do in the service and, and, uh, and again and again, talking about the miracle power of God. So uh, whether or not... Uh, um, you'd want to see it that way. Uh, we do see that the voice has a lot to do with the gifts of the Spirit in operation. But I want to get down through here because uh, I want to just read this passage of Scripture. Then what I'd like to do is each one of us just uh, maybe give an example uh, or a testimony of how a particular gift has, uh, has operated in, in your life. Uh, we mentioned Pastor Marlene, Pastor Gary, I'm Gary Bailey, and this is Pastor John Maruka, and at the end of the table is Pastor uh, uh, Rob Laro. He's an associate with Pastor Gary. So uh, let's, uh, let's read on down through here. 
He says, Wherefore I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calls, calleth Jesus accursed, and that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord but by the Holy Ghost. Uh, a scripture that comes to mind when I read this is in Revelation. Uh, John said that the, that the testimony of Jesus Christ is the spirit of prophecy. Mm -hmm. So in other words, uh, any of the gifts of the spirit, any prophecy, any tongues and interpretation will always promote and exalt the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, he goes on and he says, Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operations, but it's the same God which worketh all in all. So we see these gifts, uh, uh, the various aspects of the gifts. We have the gifts, we have ministry gifts, and then we have various operations of the gifts. And then he, he goes on and tells us uh, uh, that the manifestation, verse 7, but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. So God gives these gifts for us all to profit. You know, I was thinking, and this is just a testimony that my wife and I have, when we went to, uh, uh, we're looking at buying a house, and we went to a, a service, an evangelist service, and, and uh, the lady called, uh, uh, called up anybody that was believing God for anything. You're believing, I don't know, was she specifically saying we're believing for, you're believing for a house or a car? Or we, we basically just told her, though, we were believing for a house. Mm -hmm. And so she agreed with us, and uh, lo and behold, we're still living in the house that we prayed for that day. Amen. And what would that be? That would be the gift of faith in operation uh, on behalf of that evangelist. So that was a wonderful testimony in our life. Uh, but going on down here, uh, he, he says, uh, uh, the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, and we'll see in this uh, couple, uh, next few verses, the nine manifestation of the gifts of the Spirit. Uh, firstly, we have uh, the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another the gifts of healing by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. But all these worketh that one and the self same Spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. So what I'd like to do, I want to start with Marlene, but uh, uh, we see in this short passage of Scripture, Paul uh, tells us about the, uh, uh, the variety of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And uh, we've seen these gifts operate in our life in various ways. But what I'd like to do is just open it up to the panel and just maybe share some uh, testimonies or experiences that you've had personally uh, with the gifts of the Spirit, either operating in the gifts or receiving uh, the gift from someone else. So, Marlene, go ahead and uh, okay, what share came with to us. To me, uh, Gary, was uh, I believe it would be the word of knowledge, and the Lord has used that often in the area of when my children were teenagers, and um, in, in some areas when they were teenagers, then even as they grew into adults that I would have, I guess it would be the word of knowledge, I would sense in my spirit that they were in danger. Mm. And uh, one in particular that came to me as you were talking is um, we were living in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and Todd was po possibly 16 to 17, and he had a motorcycle, and he worked part-time at a grocery store, and then he'd drive his motorcycle back and forth. Mm -hmm. So we were at someone's house, and he was going to come over to the house after work. Well, as we were at the house, you know, visiting and so forth, and I discerned in my spirit that he was in danger, and I didn't know what. Mm -hmm. So I was just praying in the spirit the whole time until he got there. And he said, when I got on my motorcycle to ride back over home, uh, he said it was raining and there were no lights on my motorcycle. So wow. he was basically... 
in right, a dangerous in the situation. Dark. In yeah. the dark, it was at night. On a major high, uh, highway? Yeah, or on he'd a have to go on the, road. yeah, in Oklahoma. And, um, and so that was it. The Holy Spirit alerted me mm. that he was in danger, and I prayed in the Spirit, and he got there safely. So you it. didn't quite know what was no. going on with him, but you knew right. you needed to pray at that moment. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So how would you describe that gift that was in operation then? Well, uh, I suppose it would be the word of knowledge, wouldn't yeah. it? Yeah, where you uh, knew I something I was knew going something, on I was with Todd, with yes, Todd with, specifically. With Todd. Mm -hmm. Yeah, specifically. Yeah. That's interesting, yeah. And uh, do you want me to just share one? Or yeah, no, one go, ahead. Quick one? go ahead. Uh, and then we again, got, uh, in Oklahoma, this is when, um, as I said, the children were younger, and I wasn't sure because I didn't have much teaching on it from Bible school, uh, exactly, but I had a dream, and in the dream, I was driving our younger son to school. He was 10, and in the dream, he fell out of the back of the station wagon, and when I got out of the car and walked around, he was laying there dead. Mm. And so I woke up, and I thought, is this God trying to tell me that something, you know, was going to happen, or is the devil trying to scare me? I didn't know which one, but I took authority. Yeah. I put a stop to it. So then the next morning, my husband drove Danny to school mm -hmm. in this little car that he had. And I didn't tell him the dream or anything, but as they went out the door, the dream came back to me. And I said, no devil, I bind you, I break your power, I cancel your assignment on any accident in the name of Jesus. And that was it. I went to Bible school and didn't think of it. So when we got home for dinner that night, Danny, being 10, said, uh, oh, Dad, tell Mom what happened. <laughs> and I said, what happened? See, still not knowing whether the devil was trying to scare me or God was trying to tell me to take authority, but I took authority. Sure. And my husband said we were driving down a two-lane highway, and I was driving, taking him to school in this little car. Danny was in the front seat. And I looked behind me, and a lady was coming at least 60 miles an hour, not stopping behind oh, them. He said, I saw she was going to hit us soon if I didn't get out of the way. And he just quickly made a left. There was a road and pulled over and she went flying by. Wow. And so then I said to the Lord, well, why was I in the dream? And it was my car I drove instead of him. Well, we're one in the spirit. So it didn't sure. matter. Yeah. See, but God warned me and I took authority. Yeah. Let me, uh, I want to address that. Maybe someone else has some comments along this line. Mm -hmm. But uh, I know people very often get dreams like that. Sometimes mm -hmm. they're negative. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they're, uh, uh, their situation of life and death mm -hmm. or uh, mm -hmm. like an accident situation. Uh, mm -hmm. I believe that, that knowledge and information comes from God. Mm -hmm. uh, now, what we do with that knowledge and information mm -hmm. is what makes the difference. Mm -hmm. And I believe God showed you that so that you could begin to pray, so that you could stop it in the realm of the Spirit, mm -hmm. and uh, so that what the devil intended... See, I think God sometimes shows us what the devil intends for evil mm -hmm. or for bad. Uh, if we'll get a hold of the situation, God can turn it around for good. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it's a mistake when you get things like that in the spirit or you know by a dream or by a vision to just sit back and say well it looks like we're gonna have, we're gonna all be dead if, you know in the next car uh, trip mm -hmm. we take or mm -hmm. or you know or you see the building come down I guess we're all gonna be in the building no God shows you those things so you can pray against that Amen. and you can either not be in that situation mm -hmm. or circumstance or you can pray against it and take authority over it. Right. Because we do have authority to change things mm -hmm. in this life. You know, there are people that believe that whatever happens is the will of God. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, if, if that were the case, then uh, we'd all be in trouble. Uh, any, I don't know if anyone else has anything to add along that line. Uh, but, uh, yeah. Also, but that's a but great that, testimony. That was many of, like that have happened. Where you've had just a word of knowledge. Either a word or, of knowledge and urgency in my spirit that there was a, a, a sensing that something was going to happen harming my children. Mm -hmm. and, um, and then also dream. 
Yeah. In the dream. I would I would guess or venture to say this that when there's a dream or vision involved, there's also discerning of spirits involved gonna, there. I was just gonna say. That. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was just I was just about to say. <laughs> well, you were not quick enough well, there, buddy. Saying, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm just saying, you know, I, I would say that the discerning spirits is uh, really com comes into play there. Sure. Even more so than the word knowledge, because mm -hmm. he, you know, she, she like she said, she wasn't sure whether God was telling her right. or whether the devil, the devil was just messing with her. Yeah. So you know that that takes some discerning on sure. our part to. Uh, See which is what. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good. But regardless, I still took authority. If I was thinking Amen. it was the devil or that maybe uh, I didn't I wasn't sure, but I stopped it Amen. in the name of Jesus. That's what, yeah. and that's what the discerning experience yeah. is for. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, so you, for us to be able to you know, do what we need to do next. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Um, you're on there, buddy. What the, yeah. <laughs> Give us an example of something that's happened with you and the gifts of the Spirit. Well, I can't remember what I may have shared on a previous panel, but when we first were learning about tongues and interpretation and the idea of having a known interpreter rather than just hoping that somebody will interpret. Uh, the Lord put on my heart that I should interpret in our church. And as soon as I, as soon as he said that, I was like, yes, certainly I will do that. You know, yeah. and just by faith, because I don't have an interpretation, right? So mm -hmm. you, you just believe that you have one when it so I, we just got started in that vein, and a fellow showed up at our church that had never come before. And uh, so the service went on, and uh, at the end of the service, Brother Rob had a word of knowledge that somebody had a tongue. So I told the people, well, we'll just wait, just relax, there's no pressure or anything, just let the Holy Spirit have his way, and we'll just wait here a few minutes. And you know, just be obedient, don't be afraid. You can't do anything wrong. You know, step out, go ahead. <clears throat> well, sure enough, we waited for, seemed like a long time. And the fellow that was visiting began to give, give a tongue. And he went on and on and on <laughs> and on. I thought, Lord, you better be here now. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even think that far ahead, you know. So I just waited, and my experience with interpretation is you just wait, and as soon as the person is done, you start immediately. Yeah. Uh, but you don't try to think up an interpretation while he's talking. You wait. You just wait. And uh, so I waited, and when he quit, I started. And this interpretation just kept coming and coming. Mm -hmm. I went on and on mm. and on, just as long, at least as long as he did. Wow. And mm -hmm. uh, it just amazed me, mm -hmm. you know, how the Lord responded to that. Because mm -hmm. I, you can't, uh, I don't know about everybody else, but you just can't think up a lot of stuff to say. Yeah. But uh, anyway, I've, uh, in our church, uh, I'm sure we're not like, every other church, and maybe there's some that do it the same way or not, but tongues and interpretation or prophecy are for exhortation, edification, or comfort. That's your three gifts. Mm -hmm. Your tongues, your interpretation, your prophecy. The primary purpose is for edification, exhortation, and comfort. Mm -hmm. A much needed gift in the church. In the church, when somebody begins to give a tongue, everybody in the room is challenged to step up in their belief right there. Am I going to believe this or am I not going to believe it? Yeah. If I'm not believing it, why are you even here? Mm -hmm. So right, that places a demand on all of the faith in the room right there. Mm -hmm. Now everybody's believing, well, God's going to say something here. So we just wait till the tongue is done and see what. Mm -hmm. And so uh, the edification, uh, 
exhortation and comfort is the word that the congregation needs to hear, something uplifting, something mm -hmm. edifying, something that will put a charge, something that mm -hmm. uh, gives their faith something to latch on to. Uh, a lot of times in charismatic circles, we want to do personal prophecy and lay hands on somebody and tell them how to get their act together. Uh, the word of knowledge in, in ministry and the word of wisdom and the discerning of spirits, I believe, work the best when you don't know who you're talking to. I mean, you, you've you never met this person before. You don't know anything about them, but the Lord's given you a word for them. That's a pure word. When you have somebody standing in front of you that you know full well, it's, sure. hard, it's hard to keep your natural knowledge out of the picture. To try to yeah, discern or right. so you don't divide know, between. Right, yeah. a lot of what you're saying is anchored in what you know. Yeah. And uh, sometimes that can go downhill. It just, it just goes, it tends to go downhill because then uh, the person that's receiving the word thinks that that's your opinion. You know what I mean? Sure. Whereas if you're a stranger talking to them, they know it's not your opinion. You don't know. One of the yeah. greatest prophecies that I've had spoken over me came from a man that never saw me before. Mm -hmm. In fact, normally, if you go to a meeting somewhere and there's a prophetic person there mm -hmm. that doesn't know you from Adam, and they call you out, that's when things happen. It's just mm -hmm. dynamic because you know the guy has no way of knowing you. But anyway, praise the Lord. I think that's exactly what Paul had in mind in chapter 14 when uh, he said uh, he said this, when someone comes in who does not believe mm -hmm. and someone begins to prophesy or speak mm -hmm. a tongue and interpretation over them, um, right. uh, then they're ministered to, you know. Um, this way, I, I, let's see, verse 24, uh, if all prophesy, Speaking of ministry gifts or ministry um, uh, leaders in the church, if, if you all, he's not talking about 200 people prophesying in the church. He's talking about those that are ministering in that line. Uh, but if you all prophesy and there come in one that believeth not or one unlearned, he's convinced of all, he's judged of all. Thus the secrets of his heart are made manifest. And so falling down on his face, he'll worship God and report that God is in you of a truth. Well, you brought out a couple of good things, uh, Gary. Uh, the first thing is these operate by faith. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you stand up and step up to the plate by faith. That means you don't feel anything. There's no, you know, people are waiting for an unction. They're waiting for the anointing. They're waiting for some, some, uh, <laughs> But God wants to infuse himself into the service. Amen. And the way he does that is when we step up to the plate by faith and begin to operate in these things. A tongue coming from the congregation or the platform uh, or an interpretation or prophecy coming forth uh, from leadership. Uh, the other point you brought out was, uh, and I, I had a guy on one of our YouTube channels write in and basically say that these gifts, there, there's nothing supernatural about them. There's nothing spiritual about them. Uh, it's all natural. You know, it's natural uh, when someone speaks in tongues, it's because uh, they've heard it before. They understood that. They understand a certain diction. And uh, the problem with that is uh, people don't learn or they don't understand to discern between your soul and your spirit. Granted, there's a lot of, and you, you brought it up, Gary, uh, there, there certainly is a danger of prophesying out of our heads mm -hmm. or prophesying from, our, from the soulish man. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, when these gifts of the Spirit come forth, they do not come, there's nothing natural about them. They are right. supernatural, they are spiritual. This is why Paul in the beginning of uh, chapter 12 said, Concerning spirituals, mm -hmm. concerning spiritual phenomena, concerning spiritual manifestation, mm -hmm. concerning spiritual gifts, I don't want you to be ignorant. Mm -hmm. These do not come from the soul of man. They come from the spirit of man mm -hmm. that's filled with the Holy Ghost. And, and so we need to understand that even, even though they, you know, obviously there are things that are more spectacular and more uh, uh, 
grandiose. But uh, these gifts of the Spirit, whether or not it's spectacular or not, come from the spiritual. They come from the supernatural. Uh, they come from the Spirit of God. And uh, that's, that's what we need to understand, is these are not natural gifts. These are spiritual gifts. And that was a, a great illustration of how the <coughs> gifts can especially be powerful in their working when we don't know the person. Mm -hmm. You know, that is a, that's such a powerful thing. And, and I think it's interesting that Paul mentioned if someone comes in, two classes of people, unbelievers mm -hmm. or unlearned. Mm -hmm. So obviously we're not going to be doing a lot of prophesying to people that are learned and believers. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, why is that? Because... We are, they're already coming to church. They're already learning some things. These ought to be people that are ministering to others. And so it's an opportunity for the church to minister to, to people outside the church. Go ahead, John. What, uh, well, you, you um, know, one thing about that, believing and believers and unbelievers, you can have your believers there, but they can be many times an unbelief. Well, that's that's true you know, too. So, yeah. uh, and yeah. in that in that case, you know, tongues tongues are for them too. Sure. But uh, you, you know, I don't know who this guy was who wrote into you and told you <laughs> that everything was natural or not. You know, well, for him uh, it is. You, yeah. For him it is. Yeah, exactly. Well, th he's not going to get this at all then. Right. What I'm going to say next, because you know, you don't see. All of the gifts, you know, you know, you see tongues, you hear it, you hear yeah. it, you see it. You know, that's why Simon the Sorcerer said, "Hey, I'll give you money for that." You see, he saw something. Sure. So, the thing about the gift of healing, uh, I know I've operated in it, and I've seen, and I know people have gotten the healing, but it's not as in your face is tons no, of interpretation. Exactly. That's, what, that's what I'm saying. If that guy doesn't, Boy, you if, that, a, you if that guy doesn't, point. if that guy doesn't believe that, he's he's not going to have anything to do with what I'm saying because right. you know because he can't see it. There's nothing more in your face, supernatural and spiritual, than tongues and interpretation. Exactly. That's true. You know, yeah. and that's in his face. But what I'm saying is, when you know that you've been used in the operation of the gift of healing, and somebody has come to you and said. Hey, I got a healing the other night. You know, then what? Yeah. You know, so, and I, I've had that number of times. You know, I you know I can't sit here and, and 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 give you all that information, but I know at different times people have gotten a healing because the gift was in operation. You know what it reminds me is when Jesus went and ministered. And the scriptures say the power of the Lord was present to heal. Amen. And when you're talking about uh, like a gifts, gifts of healing in operation, there are times where, it, yeah, the, it is just, there's an anointing it's, to heal. It's happening. Yeah, it's, it's happening. You know it's happening. Yeah. And well, I remember one, one night in particular in a service on a Wednesday night, uh, a woman got a healing. And, and we know that she got a healing because she went and the doctor said, been healed somehow Praise you know God. and uh so <laughs> that's what i'm saying it, it, this guy whoever it was he would never get that yeah then, yeah yeah because some people he, because are always he, living in the natural living and they're looking after the natural looking after the flesh you can't always see right right it right in your face like like tongues are Right, with some of these other manifestations of gifts for sure. We're going to stop this session, uh, uh, about 30 minutes we're going to do our sessions and we'll be back for the uh, second session.